David Lynch is an American filmmaker, painter, visual artist, actor, musician and writer, but is best known for his work as a director for films such as A Razorhead 1977, Blue Velvet 1986, The Elephant Man 1980 and Twin Peaks 1992. Lynch also created a short film collection including Six Figures Getting Sick 1966, The Alphabet 1968, the Grandmother 1970, The Amputee 1974, The Cowboy and the Frenchman 1988, and Premonitions Following an Evil Deed 1996. The film I analysed in my case study essay was The Grandmother. The Grandmother has been awarded the best short subject for Wildfest Houston in 1970. The film follows a young neglected boy who plants some strange seeds that grow into a grandmother. Lynch was also responsible for the production design in this short, which is why I analysed his work in terms of creative choices for the film. Lynch coined the term Lynchian in the 1980s, which refers to the characteristic, reminiscent or imitative films or tele television work of David Lynch. Lynch is noted for juxtaposing surreal or sinister elements with mundane, everyday environments and for using compelling visual images to emphasise a dreamlike quality of mystery or menace. Lynch's films have often been compared to dreams, and the grandmother doesn't do anything to disprove that reading. The grandmother has a dystopian feel to the narrative through the boy, which is heavily emphasised with the muted colour palette, emphasising blood-coloured reds on the character's lips, eyes, and key props such as the bu bucket filled with soil. The reason I chose to analyse the grandmother is because whilst creating the mood boards for Babes in Toyland, specifically in the auction room scene, Imagery from the grandmother came to mind in terms of the colour palette and the mystical themes embedded. The atmosphere Lynch creates is unnerving and enigmatic. The spectator has to draw their own conclusions and I place Juan as the main enigma as well as the 30 women bed bidding for Tony. The grandmother uses both live action and animation. Lynch utilised his home as the bedrooms and kitchen by painting the walls black and placing pristine white and oak furniture to stand out against the darkness. The set seems simple with just a bed, chest of drawers and a kitchen table being the most prominent props, but this raises enigmas such as are the characters as normal as they seem? The way the rooms are shown relies on simplicity and darkness rather than depth to sell the horror-like environment that is being depicted. The essential structure of a place is formed by this minimalistic approach to the environment which allows Lynch to explore issues of abuse and violence inside it. The purpose of this simple set masters a home is to explore the symbolism that is profound in the sense that only a true surrealist can conceive. The boy's true home is not this dark set but instead his grandmother who he plants to bring his innocence and childlike manner back. An important aesthetic binary opposition is presented with the dark against the light. When the family is born they are shown acting like animals on a forest floor, however once in darkness they present themselves more human-like. Due to the film having no dialogue apart from the occasional bark of the word mutt, the sp spectator is forced to pay attention to the visual motifs, set design and costume play to draw their own conclusions. Similarly to, babe to Tony and Babes in to Toyland, the boy is dressed in a black and white tuxedo, juxtaposing the other characters' costumes. The boy's shirt is, is the only white piece of clothing shown emphasising his innocence against the dark and dreary set. His innocence eventually swallows him up, leaving the boy looking skeletal. I also mirrored this in Tony's costume for Babes in to Toyland, dressing him in pristine white against the dark sets in both the sex shop and the auction room. However, Tony is not swallowed by the sets. He instead stands out and his presence cannot go unnoticed. The narrative is linear yet feels non-linear due to the lack of dialogue which allows more enigmas to be created. Lynch has achieved the dehumanisation of the characters emphasising how different they are to the rest of humanity. They are always shot in the dark which does not happen in real life therefore allowing Lynch to express his creativity through unrealistic storytelling. The world is designed quite simply for the characters since the boy only has to plant a seed to grow someone who will love and cherish him and the seeds just happen to be in his room. The grandmother is harder to analyse due to the open ending and through the use of enigmas. Does the boy kill himself at the end? What is the family's purpose? Do his family actually love him?